vastly different from what I've been sold on. That's what we've got to understand. That fundamentally, we can be entirely free and be totally prosperous and have, and have nothing to do with money. We've got to get that out of our head. Any form of money, this idea of hoarding and, and saving and how it's a euphemism and it's good and practical and pragmatic and you know, it shows common sense when you hoard all this money. But in the sight of God, it's detestable. And we all struggle with it. We all feel like phonies. We all hate ourselves sometimes. I mean, who doesn't? Be honest. Just be honest with yourself. I do. I don't like myself sometimes. You better believe it. You know, and let every man be called a liar. But God can't lie. But I sure as hell know one thing. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to be a money lover. I want to be free. And so I'm saying, God, I'm inviting the Spirit in. Say, show me how it's going to be, and let me teach others and prepare people to make straight the paths of the Lord. You know, I'm on the watch chart trying to warn people, don't get caught with your pant, your metaphorical proverbial pants. What does that mean? What's that, what's that mean? It means don't have the wrong belief system. Don't be hitched to the wrong wagon here and go down to hell because it's going to get sorted out okay and god's not stupid the holy angels aren't stupid they're going to be just and judge right and correctly and like jesus said unless your righteousness exceeds that of the pharisees and the sadducees you shall in no way enter the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven is coming to earth that's what it's going to be earth is going to be renewed reclaimed by god and it's going to be a beautiful perfect place for all those that inherit it are found worthy and survive and get this great reward of a renewed earth and everlasting life, these imperishable bodies. It's going to be a beautiful scene, man. And it's for everybody. So I want to be there. So I've got to confess every sin and all those things I talked about, being a liar or being a hypocrite or being a money lover. I mean, those are sins common to humanity. If we, But we've got the most important thing, in order to be forgiven, you first got to confess it. you got to admit it in your heart and say, God, cleanse me. Now help me to move on and to help others. And this is fighting a good fight. It's snatching people from the flames of hell when they don't even know they're on their way. But they're on the wrong path. They're on the wrong track. They're following the ways of the world, the ways of Satan. That's it. The ways of the flesh. The ways of sin, which leads to death. If you don't admit it and confess it and repent, turn and let God heal you. Okay, this is what he's calling for. So... Being this watchman on the tower, you understand it's a, it's a, it's a responsibility, it's a duty, it's an obligation, it's a compulsion, it's a commission that God gives people to warn because otherwise, you see, I'm self-interested, right? So if I don't warn others, the blood of others is on my head. That's what's written. So it's all logic. When you understand God's logic is like, you know, exponentially higher than ours, we're always reaching up to understand his logic, Okay. And it's so much better than our pseudo phony, corrupted, adulterated, tainted logic that we've been sold on. So it's not any wonder. I'm not condemning anybody. I get it, man. I get it. I get that a thick veil of darkness has been pulled down in front of our eyes. The water's been muddied and bloodied, and we believe this and that because we've been sold on. We've been duped, deceived, taken, hoodwinked. Yeah, we got to admit it. And we've got to admit what we're looking for out there, man. If you've got to eat an economy that's working, okay, and, and we're going to put an end to dubious war, and we're going to put an end to high crime, we're going to put an end to debt, we're going to put an end to all the social welfare out there, we're going to put an end to all the abortions and the prostitution out there, then you've got to understand basic economics. You've got to understand what you're looking for. We just, just use it as a means to an end because it's filthy lucre. We want nothing to do with it. It's competing with God's affection and attention. We want to be free from money. We want to be free. I know that with certainty, absolute certainty, that to be absolutely free, we must be free from money and all its entanglements. And only God can show you that truth. But it's beautiful, man. But we're a long way from it. It's scary. The idea of rendering Satan irrelevant in this world, he's had a hold on it for so long, and you think he's not going to go down with a fight and all the minions that don't even know that's the side they're fighting on, they're going to fight for the establishment when it's corrupt and crooked and it needs to absolutely fall. It's built on a, a hill of, a, 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 of melting sand. It's just, it's one way or another, the whole house of cards is coming down, and if we need a third world war, then God's going to let it happen, but he's got to shake us out of our slumber. And we've got to get it, man. We're screwed up. We are a screwed up race, very much in need of God. 
And that is the most important thing I could ever convey to everybody is just, God, please help us, you know, and um, free us from this curse. Help me understand and help me to help others understand. That's the best thing I can do. And pull people out of the flames because they are on their way to hell, but they may not know it. And they need you. They need me. They need somebody to inform them, okay, to be reach out and talk to people, open up a conversation with people. Because that's the only way we're going to fix this thing. So what you're looking for in the economy is the opposite of what we've been looking at ever since JFK was murdered, okay? And nobody talks about this. Roger Stone thinks it was it was LBJ. Look, Roger Stone, I respect, I like the man, he's a gentleman, but look, anybody could be duped and deceived. Any of us, any of us. We're all subject to that as humans. So, unless, unless Lyndon Baines Johnson was working for uh, the Federal Reserve, okay, the money printing class, then uh, I don't believe he was behind it. If he was, then that's a whole other story. You could say, well, there was all these unintended beneficiaries from, you know, his assassination. Fine, that's fine. The war, the people want to get war started in Indochina and Vietnam and all that crap. Listen, that's fine. But at the end of the day, understand that he was, he was extinguishing the Federal Reserve, okay? He was supplanting them with federalized money, sound currency. It was a huge threat to these evildoers, these establishmentarians, okay? Huge threat. That's the biggest threat. So whatever happened, just because they murdered the president, now we don't talk about these policies anymore? Oh, well, that was a failure. We give up on trying to, you know, extinguish the Federal Reserve, say we don't need you clowns. This is illegitimate debt. Now all you high-ranking, highfalutin politicians out there, you're getting sued. You, you work it out between you and the Federal Reserve. You guys were in cahoots with each other. You colluded against the will of the American people who 90% did not want this debt to go through. They knew it was, it, it was a sham. It's a fraud. Okay, we knew what you did. You did it deliberately. You blew out the pipes of the economy by dumping all that money on the housing market. And so this bailout of 08 is what I'm referring to. So this is when capitalism had a chance to work, where you would have seen what's called a market correction. I mean, I know what the hell I'm talking about. It's all simple capitalist precepts and principles. This is what happens. There's risk in capitalism. It's as simple as that. If you don't like it, then be a communist. I don't know, but being a crony capitalist is the most evil, vile thing out there because you're creating all the rabid communists. You're creating a totalitarian, authoritarian state. You're creating misery. That's it. All you're doing by debasing our currency through running up our cost of living is evil. That's what we've got to understand here, folks. This is how you increase enslavement, tyranny, oppression. All this stuff advances, and people say, well, I'm benefiting. My numbers have still been going up, so I'm riding this wave, man, as long as I can. And I know it's fraud and all this, but, you know, see, you're going to go to hell. That's it. You're going to be one of those ones who's caught with your pants down. You're the one whose blood I don't want on my hands. So I'm trying to explain this very, very simply. But under free market supply and demand capitalism, only one thing happens if there's an iota of progress being made. No matter how long it takes, your currency increases in worth, with the exception of temporary disruptions in the supply chain when something might temporarily cost more until we jump on board as a civilization, fix the problem, increase production, and end it so that your currency keeps going up in worth. And where does it lead? You know where it eventually leads. Ten bucks in your pocket is worth ten billion. Nobody cares about money anymore. We're all fabulously wealthy and having fun, serving each other. And if you think that's too far out, too fantastical, too idealistic, okay, that's your that's your issue. That's your problem. You'll have to you'll say you'll stand before God and you'll say, Yes, my mind just couldn't wrap around it. I didn't have you're gonna have to explain that you didn't have the potential, uh, the the ability to imagine that. Okay, but don't you're not I'm not going to buy it. I'm just not going to You're a human being. You're made an image and likeness. God, you have unlimited potential to understand these basic truths. Okay, 
And that's a basic truth that I'm telling you is that you have the ability to understand these economic principles, what I'm talking about, how it would lead to freedom and how it would lead to a world where we just don't care about money. It's an, of no concern, no need because it has no intrinsic value. It's not a sailboat. It's not a jet plane. It's not an automobile. It's not a house. It's not even a wristwatch. Okay. It's just money. Okay. That's it. And all this accumulated wealth is our inheritance because God created the Golden Gate Bridge and the factories and the crap coming out of the factories. How? Because he created human beings. He gave us the brains, the wherewithal to do all this stuff. So everything rightfully belongs to God. I'm just being logical. I'm just being reasonable. And if it's perfectionist and if it's idealistic, that's good. God said to be that way. Jesus said, be ye perfect. We're to be perfect. We're to help others reach that goal. At least let's test the waters. You know, you can only prove me wrong. You can only tell me that society will break out into de de decadence and decay. And we'll just be lazy and it'll all fall apart. Okay, prove it. Let it happen. Let's test the waters. Let's push the envelope of egalitarian principles, economically speaking. Let's raise our standard.